Hello from West Virginia! Uh, this is clearly not West Virginia. <laughs> but what I clearly have is joke of the day. I know you're ready and you've been waiting. So why don't oysters give to charity? Why don't oysters give to charity? Because they're shellfish. <laughs> they're shellfish. <so. laughs> okay. Well, let's not be selfish and let's take a look at solving multi-step equations. And this is part three of our three-part series on multi-step equations. Now, we've got to take another look at those golden rules of algebra just to make sure we really know what we're doing here. And remember, those two golden rules say you've got a pan balance. Here is that fulcrum that's in the middle of that pan balance. And everything on this side is in this pan. And everything on this side is in this pan. So here's your pan balance, it's all balanced out, and you've got to make sure that you keep it balanced. So whatever you do on this side, you have got to do on this side, and vice versa. So do unto one side as you would do unto the other. The second of those golden rules is that you are going to undo what has been done to that variable in opposite order. In other words, you're going to reverse those order of operations. You're going to say, okay, if I knew what that variable was, then... I would follow proper order of operations. I would follow that PEMDAS, but I don't know what that variable is, so I have to work backwards to get it. That's why you have to reverse your order of operations, working backwards to figure out, okay, what is that number that I can plug in and create truth? So you're going to undo what has been done to that variable in opposite order. However, what we've seen up to this point is situations where this side is basically as simple as it can get. You had one variable and one constant. Now, it wasn't one variable, though maybe it was like a 5D or a 5X plus 5. But my point is, you didn't have a couple of sets of variables. You only had one set of variables and a constant. On this side, one set of variables and a constant. And then once you had one variable and a constant, one variable and a constant, then you could get all your variables on one side, all your constants on the other side, and the whole idea is to separate them. And remember, I've said over and over again that it does not matter which side you get your variables on or which side you get your constants on. It makes no difference. Just separate them. So as we look at this situation, we're going, now wait a minute. I have a couple of sets of variables here and a couple of sets of variables here. When you have situations like that, that's a little bit beyond what we're used to doing. If I could get it down to variable, constant, variable, constant, I would know exactly what to do. And guys, this is the nice thing about math, is oftentimes it just takes one little step to kick it back to what you already know. And in this case, that one little extra step is that we're going to simplify the algebraic expression on this side and simplify the algebraic expression on this side. Sometimes you need to simplify that algebraic expression on each side of the equal sign first before you move on. So I'm looking at this side of my wall, I'm looking at everything in this pan going, now wait a minute, I have three D's and four D's in that pan, like literally the letter D. I have three of them and then I have four more of them in that pan. That means I have a total of seven D's in that pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify that side. Now, there's nothing more that I can do because I cannot take that 7D and add a 5 to it. They're not like terms. I can't put them together. But notice on this side, similar idea. In this pan, I have 6Ds and 7 more Ds. Well, that means I have a total of 13Ds in that pan. So yet again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the algebraic expression on each side of that equal sign because now this looks like what I'm used to seeing. And now at this point, I'm just going to separate my variables and my constants, remembering it does not matter which side I put them on. So I can either take the 70s out of this pan and then 70s out of here, or the 13Ds out of this pan and 13Ds out of here. Now 13Ds out of here is going to throw me in the hole. We've seen an example of that. We know how to work with negative numbers. We're okay with that. But just to make life easy on us, I'm just going to take the 70s out of this pan, which means I as well need to take 70s out of here. So that leaves me the 5 over here, and on this side, 13D minus 70 is a 6D. So what I did was I threw all of my variables on this side. Now I need to throw all my constants on the other side. That means that I've got to take the 8 out of this pan so that I can take 8 out of this pan. Now that I went in the hole over there, that's okay. 5 minus 8 is a negative 3, and that gives me a 60 over here. Now I need to get the D by itself. 
be very careful, folks. You want to get the D by itself. How do you undo multiplication by 6? Yes, divide by 6. So I'm going to divide by 6 here, and I'm going to divide by 6 here. Where I say be careful is you have a negative 3 divided by a 6. That reduces as a, or simplifies as a fraction. It's not 6 divided by negative 3 to give me a negative 2. That's not the case. The 3 is on the numerator. 6 is on the denominator. So be very careful about that. It only simplifies as a fraction, but it does simplify to negative 1 half, and that's going to be my D. And like in all other cases, we can check this. Remember, the check simply says, okay, if that D is a negative 1 half, I should be able to put it here and here, and here and here, and simplify, and get the left and the right side to be the same. Now, if I do that, 3 times a negative 1 half is going to be a negative 3 halves. 4 times a negative 1 half is going to be a negative 2. And then on this side, 6 times a negative 1 half is going to be a negative 3. 7 times a negative 1 half is going to be a negative 7 halves. And now as I simplify this side, I've got a negative 3 halves minus 2. This is a negative 1 and a half. Well, let's put them all over a 1 and get common denominators all the way across. So I have a negative 3 halves minus 4 halves plus 10 halves. And on this side, a negative 6 halves minus 7 halves plus 16 halves. So negative 3 halves minus 4 halves is a negative 7 halves. Negative 7 halves plus 10 halves is going to be a 3 half. And on this side, negative 6 halves minus 7 halves is going to be a negative 13 halves. And, oops, hold on a second here. There we go. Minus 13 halves plus 16 halves is going to be 3 halves. Did I create truth? Absolutely, the two sides are the same. So we know that that is the correct answer. So you can see the idea here is shave this side down, simplify it. Shave this side down, simplify it, so that you end up with just variable constant, variable constant. Then you can separate your variables and your constants. So the big name of the game at this point is simplify each side. So keep that in mind then as we carry on with the rest of our examples. And you know I've got a lot because you know I like for you to feel really comfortable with this. So my, my set's falling apart. Okay, so now here's my wall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all my like terms on each side. 2x minus 3x gives me a negative x. And then on this side, I've got 4x minus 3x gives me x. So now I've simplified this side because I cannot put that negative x and that 7 together. Simplified this side. I cannot put that x and that 9 together. So now I'm ready to separate my variables and my constants. So I can take the x out of this pan, or I can add an x to this pan. It makes no difference. And just to prove that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract that x here. Negative x minus x is a negative 2x. And on this side, I get a 9. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and I put all my variables on this side. I'm going to slide all my constants over on this side. So I'm going to subtract that 7. And that gives me a negative 2x equal to 2. And at this point, in order to get that x by itself, what I'm going to do is divide through by that negative 2. And so that gives me x equals negative 1. And here again, I can check this. When I go to check it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that negative 1 right here. 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. And then on this side, 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4 and then plus 9, and then negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3, and over here negative 2 plus 7 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. On this side negative 4 plus 9 is 5, 5 plus 3 yet again is 8. I know it's right. Now, I said I was going to prove a point. Let me prove another point. What if I would have instead added the x here and added the x here? Now, if that was the case, instead I would have a 7 on this side, and on this side, I would have a 2x plus 9, and I would subtract 9 from both sides. But that would give me a negative 2 over here, and a 2x on this side. I would divide both sides by a positive 2. Notice I would still get a negative 1. 
So see, it truly doesn't matter where you put your variables, where you put your constants, just separate them. All right, let's take a look at another one. Here's my wall. And remember, the idea is I need to simplify this side of the wall. Whoa, I've got this big parentheses in here. So I need to get rid of the parentheses because that is definitely not simplified. How do you get rid of a parentheses? Yes, you distribute through. So I'm going to take that 2 and I'm going to distribute it through. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 3t is a 6t. And on this side I have a negative t. Now, can I simplify this side any further? No, because I've got constant variable. They can't go together. So now I'm ready to separate them. Notice this is the only constant that I've got. That means there's no constants over here. So that means this variable has got a slide over there. So I'm going to get rid of it and subtract 6t. I'm going to do the same thing over here. That will give me a 14 and on this side a negative 7t. Because a negative t and a negative 6t or adding a negative 6t gives me a negative 7t. Now in order to get that t by itself, I'm going to divide through by a negative 7. And so that will give me 14 divided by negative 7 is a negative 2. There is my t. And just like always, we can check this to make sure that it's right. So I'm going to take that negative 2, I'm going to put it right here where the t is. So when I do 3 times that negative 2, and on the other side I want the opposite of the negative 2. So 3, now proper order of operation says go inside this parentheses right here and do inside this parentheses first. Now inside I've got addition and multiplication. We know multiplication will come before that addition. So inside, I'm going to do this multiplication. 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. Over here, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Still within that parentheses, because I'm not completely done with the P and PEMDAS. I'm still going to work this parentheses out. But 7 minus 6 is 1. And now 2 times 1 is 2. Yep, created truth. I know that that's right. Okay, one more. And then I have a couple more that I want to do. I will get lots and lots of examples. I want you to feel comfortable with everything. So here's that wall, and like we keep saying, I need to make sure that everything is simplified on this side of the wall and everything is simplified on this side of the wall. So these two are not like terms. I cannot put them together. Notice yet again a parentheses here. That is not simplified. So to get rid of that parentheses, I'm going to distribute through. And so that gives me a negative 20 because 5 times negative 4 is a negative 20. 5 times 2g is 10g. And so on this side, we've got a 75 minus 9g. And notice that there's nothing more that I can put together. It is as simple as I can get it on either side. So now I'm ready to separate my variables and my constants. So I'm going to add the 9g here and add the 9g here. That will give me a 75 on this side. And on this side, a 10g plus a 9g will be a 19g. So I sent all my variables to this side. That means all the constants need to go on this side. So I'm going to add that 20, because remember, when you, when you toss things across the side, you have to do the opposite. When you're getting rid of them, you do the opposite. The opposite of a negative 20 is a positive 20. So now on this side, 75 plus 20 will give me a 95. And on this side, I've got a 19g. And you know where to go with this. You know to get that G by itself. All you have to do is go through and divide by 19. So 95 divided by 19 is going to be 5. And so my G is a 5. And just like always, we can check this. And as I've said many times, this is the beauty of these equations. You can check every one of them. I'm going to take that 5 and put it right here where the 9 is. So 9 times 5. And on this side, I'm going to put that 5 right there where the g is, so 2 times 5. And on this side of the equal sign, an order of operation says multiply first. 9 times 5 is 45. And on this side, I have to do inside that parentheses first. Inside the parentheses, I need to do the multiplication first before this addition. So 2 times 5 is 10. And then negative 4 plus 10 will give me 6. Now on this side, 75 minus 45 is 30. And then I said negative 4 plus 10 is 6. And 5 times 6 is 30. Did we create truth? Yep. Once again, we created truth. We know that that's right. Okay, we've got a few more to go.
So in this example, here again, I like to put that wall there so I can see where each side is. I'm going to simplify this side, I'm going to simplify this side, and then I'm going to start shifting things across the wall and separate my variables and my constants. Notice on this side it's not simplified because of that parentheses, and like we said before, how do you get rid of a parentheses? Yes, you distribute. So I'm going to distribute that 4 through, that will give me an 8a minus 4, and on this side, another parentheses, they keep showing up, so now to get rid of that one, I'm going to distribute through once again. So a negative 10 distributed through is a negative 10a, and a negative 10 times a negative 5 will be a positive 50. Okay, is this side as simple as it will get? Yes, because I can't put that 8a with that negative 4. How about this side? Is it as simple as it can get? Yes, because a negative 10a plus a 50, there's nothing I can do with that either. So now it's time to separate those variables and those constants. And we've said over and over again, it really doesn't matter which side you put them on. It makes no difference. So how about we subtract that 8a, and we'll subtract it over here as well. Remember, name tag, sign on front's a sign that goes. You put the name tag on your front when you go to that meeting. You don't put your name tag back here because I don't know who you are. You need your name tag up here so I can identify your face with your name. So this is a negative 4 that's sitting there. Now on this side, a negative 10a minus an 8a, or if you prefer, plus a negative 8a, Combining those up gives me a negative 18a plus 50. So I threw all my variables on this side, meaning all my constants now need to go on this side. So we know now at this point we're going to slide that 50 over. And to remember, when you, when you move things around, you've got to do the opposite. When you're moving across the wall, you always do the opposite to get across the wall. So a negative 4 minus a 50, or if you prefer plus a negative 50, will give me a negative 54. And on this side, a negative 18a. Once again, sign in front is a sign that goes. So now, what do we do to get that a by itself? You know where to go with this. You're good at this. We're going to divide by that negative 18. And a negative 54 divided by a negative 18 is going to give us a positive 3. And so our a is going to be a positive 3. And just like every other time, we can check this. In order to check, you know that what's going to happen is I'm going to take that 3 and put it right here. And I'm going to follow order of operations. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And 5 times 4 gives me a 20. I need to follow proper order of operations, which says go inside that parentheses. Within the parentheses, I have to do this multiplication before I do this subtraction. Now on this side, similar idea. Let's put that 3 right here. And once again, do inside that parentheses first. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. That negative 2 times 10 will be a positive 20. Did I create truth? Did I get the same thing on both sides? Yep, so I know it's right. Okay, wow, these things are getting enormous, aren't they? But I know you've got this. I know you do because you're going to make your wall right here, and you're going to take this side, and you're going to simplify it and shave it down as much as possible. And you recognize, whoa, parentheses, mm -mm, not a good thing. Got to get that out of there. And you know the way you get that out is you distribute. So a negative 5 times 2r is a negative 10r, and a negative 5 times 3 is a negative 15. And you know on this side, that's not simple because we've got a parentheses there. So we're going to distribute one more time. Now, do I distribute that 3 all the way back here? No, you're good, you're good. You distribute all the way through the parentheses. That's why the parentheses is there to tell us I'm not just taking 3 times 11. I want to multiply that 3 to everything inside the parentheses, but only up to the end of the parentheses, no further. So 3 times 11 is 33. 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12. And now what we're going to do is simplify this side, but I can't because I've got variable constant. I can't put those together. I'm going to simplify this side. Oh, I can this time because a 33 minus a 58 is going to be a negative 25. So I now have variable constant, variable constant. I cannot simplify either side anymore. So it is time now to separate variables and constants. So throw all your variables on one side, and we've discussed before, it does not matter which side you toss them on. So let's just go ahead and add that 12. And I've proven to you before that if you would have added the 10 to both sides, we're still going to get to the same spot. So if I add that 12R, I get a 2R minus 15. 
and on this side I get a negative 25. So what I did was I threw all my variables on this side. That means all the constants now need to come over here. So how do I move that? Remember, when you do things across that wall, you have to do the opposite. The opposite of minus 15 is going to be add 15. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides, giving me 2r. And on this side of the wall, I get a negative 10. Now what's it take to get that r by itself? You know. Just go through and divide by 2. And so what that tells me is that my r is going to be a negative 5. And just like every other time we can check this, take that negative 5, plug it right in here, do that order of operations first. When you put that negative 5 right in here, you've got to do inside the parentheses, you've got to do the multiplication. 2 times negative 5 is a negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is a negative 7. And negative 5 times negative 7 is a negative 35. Now let's check this side. Take that negative 5, put it right here, and once again, inside that parentheses first. Within that parentheses, let's multiply first. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20, and 11 plus that 20 will be a 31. 31 times 3 will be a 93, and 93 minus 58 will give me a, whoops, no, 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 it will give me a 35. And, oh, you know what? This here was a negative 7. My mistake. Because negative 5 times 2 is a negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is a negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 5 is a positive 35. Did we get the same thing on both sides? We did. Do you see how I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I had a negative 35, a positive 35 here. I did not get the same thing on both sides. That was a red flag that I should have said, wait a minute, that can't be right then. So I went back and double checked there, and in fact it is right because I did get the same thing on both sides. All right, we got one more just to make sure we are all confident in this. So let's erase this and put that last example up there. Example number seven. And example number seven, this is another big one. We have an 8p minus 5 times p plus 3 equals 7p minus 1 times 3. Wow, lots going on in this one. But we've got this because we're going to make our wall right here and we're going to simplify this side, we're going to simplify this side, and then we're going to separate our variables and our constants. So this side, notice it can't, it's not simplified because we have the parentheses. You know what to do. You know to distribute to get rid of that parentheses. So we've got a 21p minus 3. And on this side, another problem here with, we got the parentheses. Now, when you go to distribute, remember the name tag goes with it. This isn't just a 5, it's a negative 5. So distribute that negative 5 through that parentheses so you'll get an 8p minus 5p minus 15 because negative 5 times 3 is a negative 15. Now, is this side as simple as it will get? I have a variable constant, can't put the two together, so yes it is. How about this side? Aha, you've got good eyes. No, it is not as simple as it can get because that 8p and that negative 5p, I can put those together. If I have 8p's in my pan and I'm taking out 5 of them in that pan, I only have 3p's left. Now is this side as simple as it can get? And it absolutely is because I have variable constant, I cannot put those together. So it is now time to separate those variables and constants. And as we've said many, many times, it does not make a difference which side you put them on. So I think I'm going to take the three P's out of this pan and do the same thing on this side. That will give me a negative 15 over here. And on this side, 21P minus 3P will give me 18P. I sent all my variables on this side, so now all my constants have to go to the other side. So I'm going to add 3 because when you go across that wall, you have to do the opposite in order to get across. So my negative 15 uh, plus 3, negative 15 plus 3 will give me a negative 12. And on this side, I have an 18p. And you know what to do to get that p by itself. Now, we're having a little bit of a panic attack right now because we're going, no, wait a minute, every single time... We got integers for our answers. There were no fractional answers, and suddenly this is appearing like we're getting a fraction. It's okay. Stay calm. It's okay to get a fraction for an answer. So on this side, I'll have a P, and on this side, I'm simply reducing or simplifying the fraction. 
So 12 over 18, what number will go into both? 6 will go into both. So I have a negative 2 over 3, and that is going to be my answer. Now I just need to check to make sure that it's right. And we've said before that we can check this. Now it's going to be a little bit of a cumbersome check, but I want to prove to you that you can, in fact, check this. It's going to take a bit, but we've got this. So I'm going to take 8 times the negative 2 thirds minus 5 times negative 2 thirds plus 3. And on this side, I'm going to do 7 times that negative 2 thirds minus 1 times 3. So here, when I multiply, I'm going to check those diagonals, but nothing's going to cancel. So I'm going to shoot straight across and get a negative 16 over 3. And here, when I take a negative 2 thirds plus 3, that common denominator will be 3. So a negative 2 thirds plus 3 over 1 with a common denominator of 3 will be 9 over 3. That will give me 7 thirds. And on this side, inside that parentheses, again, cancel those diagonals for this multiplication, but nothing cancels. So I'll shoot straight across and get a negative 14 thirds minus 1. And now over here, I'm going to multiply this. Once again, put that 5 over 1. Nothing cancels. I'm going to shoot straight across, giving me a negative 16 over 3 minus 35 over 3. And on this side, I'm going to do inside this parentheses, negative 14 over 3 minus 1. Well, that common denominator will be a 3, and 1 is just a 3 over 3. And a negative 14 over 3 minus 3 over 3 will be a negative 17 over 3 times 3. Now, on this side, when I go to multiply those fractions, those, can't, those diagonals are going to cancel. And I'm going to be left with a negative 17 on this side. And on this side of the equal sign, a negative 16 over 3 minus a 35 over 3 will be a negative 51 over 3. But notice that negative 51 divided by 3, in fact, is a negative 17. So I do get the same number on each side, showing me that the answer that I thought was right really is right. So hopefully you're seeing, yes, these equations were enormous. And I could make them even bigger if I really wanted to, because you've got this. The whole idea it comes down to this right here. Your two golden rules of algebra and the fact that you need to simplify each side on the equal sign. Make that wall. Simplify this side. Simplify this side. Shave it down so that all it is is variable and a constant, variable and a constant, and then separate those variables and constants. Keeping in mind your golden rules of algebra that what you do on one side, you are definitely going to do on the other side. And you're going to reverse those order of operations. You're going to undo what has been done to that variable in opposite order when it comes down to something that looks like this, where you've got constant and then variable and constant, or in the other cases where we saw in this, uh, well, this one as well is variable and constant on here. Sometimes we saw variable and constant on this side and just a constant, but the idea is at that point, you're going to reverse those order of operations. But again, the whole idea is separate your variables and constants, and it does not matter which side you've got your variables on, which side you've got your constants on. I hope that helps. Have a great day.